Hey everyone, it is Tiffany here today from Blue Lotus Mind. I just wanted to hop on here really quick and talk about what happens when we step out of our comfort zone. Now while, I just wanna show you, I got this new incense burner today. It's like the coolest thing ever. I'm mesmerized by it. I just keep watching it, it's like a new toy. So that's what I'm gonna, it's gonna be my new meditation tool. So cool, look at it there. All right, sorry, distracted. So I alluded to this on Sunday in my video on Sunday. I wanna go into it a little bit more and look at what happens in the brain when we step outside of our comfort zone. Obviously we know that stepping outside of our comfort zone is uncomfortable. That's why it's called the comfort zone versus the non-comfort zone and why it's so uncomfortable and why people fight it so much. Because there are biological and neurological systems at play that people don't even realize. And I think that when you understand what's going on in the brain, then you can set yourself up for more success. I'm just gonna change around some of the lighting in here so I don't look like a total ghost. And cool. So what happens is when you step outside of your comfort zone, you actually move into the, what we call the panic zone. Now it's important to understand that we're actually wired to be creatures of habit. So when we do the same things every single day, whether that's driving the same route to work, whether that is um, going to the same coffee shop, taking the same elevator, just doing those same things that are part of your routine. Having that routine makes your unconscious mind feel safe because it knows what to expect. I promise nothing's burning, it's just this incense. Um, your brain knows what to expect and so the fear center of your brain can relax a little bit. The psycho-cybernetic mechanism of your brain can relax a bit and says, okay, we're on autopilot, right? It's like pilots flying the plane from LA to New York. They, they're not steering the whole way. They put the plane on autopilot and allow the plane to essentially drive itself and they just keep an eye on the gauges. And that's what our unconscious mind does. It doesn't want to constantly be on guard and worrying about what's around the next corner that could harm us because that would take a lot of energy. In fact, that would take so much energy that we wouldn't have time to focus on anything else or we wouldn't have the energy to put into anything else. And so our unconscious mind goes on autopilot. When we start to step outside of our comfort zone and start to change that routine, start to address those fears and do the things that are fearful to us, starting the new job, um, going to, you know, for some people, even just going to a different location <coughs> uh, to get a coffee might be outside of their comfort zone, just depending on how stuck in routine they are. Something as simple as going to a new coffee shop might cause them a sense of anxiety or panic. And so what happens in the brain is all of a sudden the unconscious mind goes, I'm not used to this. I, I don't know what to expect here. I need to be scanning the periphery. I need to be looking out for what could possibly hurt me or kill me because ultimately that's how our species has survived for so long is that we've been wired to always be scanning our surroundings to see what could hurt us or kill us. And so when we take a step outside of our comfort zone, it sets off the fear center in our brain. It sets off that psycho-cybernetic mechanism and basically our, our brain goes into like full high alert, fight or flight system kicks in, we get pumped full of adrenaline, noradrenaline and cortisol and we're scanning what could possibly hurt me or kill me and we're looking for reasons or ways to get back into our comfort zone where we know what to expect. Here's the thing with your comfort zone though and where a lot of people go wrong is they step outside of their comfort zone. What I often hear my clients say is they'll step outside of their comfort zone and then they'll feel this panic 
and they'll they'll de they'll decipher or perceive that anxiety in their body as being a reason that they shouldn't do this right they choose to interpret those signals from their body to mean this isn't what I'm meant to be doing this is the wrong thing clearly this isn't meant to be if this is what I was supposed to be doing it wouldn't feel this gross in my body I wouldn't have this anxiety and so they allow that unconscious programming to kick in. We logically, we create logic and reason around that to say, you know, this isn't meant to be, this is gonna to be too difficult. All those fears, doubts, excuses kick in and we go back into our comfort zone and we go back into living the life that we have always known. Our unconscious mind feels comfortable again, it starts to relax and goes back to autopilot. The thing is, is the less you step outside of your comfort zone, the harder it is every time you step out. So for me, the very first time that I stepped outside of my comfort zone, I like moved like an inch, right? I barely stepped outside of my comfort zone and it was like my brain was in full alert. There was alarm bells going off everywhere, like flashing lights. And it was like, oh my God, this is like, this anxiety is like so intense. I don't know how I can handle it. The thing is, is if you just stay there, if you can breathe through that anxiety, which we call perturbation, and I'll talk about that in a second. If you can just breathe through that space and stay there, you move into what's called the comfort zone. And basically this means that your comfort, or into your, you move into your growth zone, sorry, which means that your, your comfort zone grows. The size of your comfort zone expands so that next time you have to do something even more daring and even bigger to get so outside of your comfort zone. And so what I want to suggest to you is when you feel that panic, to breathe to come back to your breath. Take four breaths in, or a breath in for four counts, hold it for four counts, exhale for four counts, and hold it for four counts. And do that style of box breathing four times. Because what that does is it calms the mind, it brings you out of your fight or flight into your rest and digest so that you can stay there and you can start to get comfortable. When you stay in that panic zone, and allow your, and then come back into your growth zone, what happens is your amygdala starts to shrink. That fear center of your brain shrinks and it becomes smaller because it, it starts to see that not everything is a life-threatening situation. Now, the more conservative of a life you've lived, and I'm not talking political ideologies, I'm talking about the way that you have grown up, right? I grew up in a small country town that had like two stoplights, Everybody knew everybody. So when I first went to university, that was so far out of my comfort zone, even though I went to university like an hour drive from my house, that was so far out of my comfort zone at the time. So you can imagine how much anxiety I had when, then I, when I then moved to Australia by myself for my first international trip ever. The first time leaving North America, I went to Australia and lived there for eight years by myself. So what I'm saying is I'm living proof that the more you step outside of your comfort zone, the easier it becomes to do it each and every time because your brain starts to recognize that not everything is going to kill you. Not every change is life threatening. You have to start small though. So if you've lived a super conservative life, then start by moving that one inch and then allow that one inch to become a foot and then allow that foot to become a hundred feet and then grow on that from there. The whole point though is that you absolutely need to start leaving your comfort zone. Otherwise, before you know it, you're going to be living in this tiny little box that keeps you caged in and nobody wants that. So Tom said the comfort zone is the silent killer. It doesn't take much for that to get shaken up. And now all spent this time. Yeah, so exactly. I mean, 
And as I talked about on Sunday, if you don't leave your comfort zone and the people around you start growing, that's gonna force you out of your comfort zone. So it's better to leave the comfort zone on your own accord because you have more control that way. So that's it for me today. I need to go and cook dinner. Um, I just wanted to jump on here real quick and share that with you so that when those feelings of anxiety and panic kick in, when you step outside of your comfort zone, you can say, this is totally normal. This is what Tiffany told me about. So have an amazing evening and I will talk to you all soon. Bye.